It's the AM show. Okay, thanks, Amanda. Type 2 diabetes. Do you know what it is? It's an illness which affects uh, around 240,000 New Zealanders and around 100,000 don't know they have it yet. What is it? And what is type 1 diabetes? This disease is not always associated with an unhealthy lifestyle. So knowing the difference between type 1 and type 2 is this year's focus uh, for World Diabetes Awareness Month. It's really serious, this stuff. It can take your life. Director of Youth for Diabetes New Zealand, uh, Ruby McGill, joins us now. Ruby, um, welcome to the show. Fantastic to have you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you are type... Type 1. And when did you learn that? So I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 14. um, And so I've had it now for over 18 years, been living with it. There is no cure, so I will have this for the rest of my life until there is a cure. And what what do you remember? What what were you told about, oh, you've got type 1 diabetes, you're 14 years old. Your your parents in the room? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and what was the reaction from you all? I suppose it it was really a bit of a blur. I don't think we understood the severity of living with type 1. um, But, you know, absolutely life-changing, having to, you know, from that day forward, um, monitor my blood sugar levels, uh, administer daily and um, insulin injections and that real consequence if I, my blood sugars are high or low, um, you know, what that could mean um, for living a long, healthy life. And were you told if you don't get this right, you could die? Yes. Yep. And so you can imagine as a as a 14-year-old, as a child, it's all, um, you know, this is what can go wrong. And the majority of us, we, we go about it with a lot of hard work and, and we live long, full, great lives, but it's, yeah, hard work. Because you never hear the good stuff, you only hear the bad stuff. You could go, you could yeah, die if you don't yeah. get this right. And as a 14-year-old, you know, that's terrifying. So tell me, what, so the highs and lows, so what, what, have you been in these highs and lows? Absolutely, I, and I think anyone living with type 1 diabetes, um, yes, there's the kind of the textbook, you know, between 4 and 8 millimole blood sugar levels, so it's all jargon, yes. we're, um, we're aiming for, but on a daily basis we are low and high because there's so many things that affect your blood sugar levels from... Um, exercise, stress, um, you know, not eating enough, having too much medication. It's an absolute it's balancing constant act. management, isn't yeah, it? It of really yourself. is. OK, yeah. so type 2 diabetes then. So yeah. that we have about 250, 240,000 New Zealanders with that. Is that from largely, is that man-made, is it? But part of it can be. So type 2 is, is a slow-onset metabolic uh, condition. And so really it's uh, there is a, a genetic factor and a, a, a large amount of it too can also be... Um, you know, sort of lifestyle lifestyle choices. So there are, um, with type 2, ways that people can prevent or delay that So happening. obesity, lack of exercise, all that sort of it thing, isn't be, it? Yes, so yeah. if you're type 1, can you pass it on to your children? If you're type 2, can you pass it on? So with type 1, um, there is a higher chance that... Um, children of a type 1 diabetic will have it, but uh, there's also a large amount of type 1 diabetics who have no... You know, no relative. Mm. I'm, I'm, so I'm a type 1 diabetic, but I don't have any um, relative with type 1. Right. In type 2, there can be a genetic. So again, if, you're, if your family's got it, slightly higher risk. But again, that doesn't mean, you know, you know there are still ways that you can avoid it. See, t- type 2 to me is this ticking time bomb in New Zealand. It's costing the health... Um, system billions of dollars now. It's also costing people their lives, and that's families. Yeah. Is there a stigma now because of the, you know, the, the two, the one disease but two very different? I think, so, and I think everything is sort of lumped in, lumped in together, and it's, so it's diabetes, and yes. we've got type one and type two. But I'd also go to further to say that. Um, people living with type 2 or trying to prevent type 2, again, there's that stigma that it's, oh, it's all lifestyle. And absolutely, there's so many lifestyle things that you can do to prevent and to manage it. But again, so there's that stigma. So, you know, people, we, you know, we don't talk about it or we avoid it. We need to talk about it. Yeah, one absolutely. Of the, one of the things I actually found quite alarming this morning is that I read that diabetes is the ninth leading cause of deaths in females, with I think more than two million dying every year, which I found alarming. So what type of diabetes is claiming a female's life, you know, majority, and yep. what more can we do to prevent it? So I think when it comes to um, those particular statistics, so it's about... Um, Un- or poorly managed diabetes. So it will be the, the whole spectrum, type 1, type 2. Um, and so it's about that, that poorly managed. So it's about, you know, needing to educate ourselves, um, uh, you know, people living, people supporting people with diabetes, how to, you know, how to keep that under control or prevent it completely if, if you're dealing with type 2. What should I do? So say if you're going low or if you're yep. high, what is something we can do to help or look out for? Okay. So for um, type 1 diabetics and type 2 who are using insulin, to manage uh, lies, sorry, lows are a, a real possibility. Um, so, 
I know when when I go low, I can uh, I really disorientated. I can get angry. Um, I, I sometimes describe it as being drunk, and so I'm like, oh gosh, what's going on there? And so it's really about making sure that I get sugar or juice to lift me back up. And when we're high, um, again, I might be going out for a walk or a, or medication, insulin to bring me back down, so I'm back to normal. Uh, type, type one sounds like it's it's just it, it's bad luck in a way, and and it's it's out there, and and if you get it you deal with it and that's what you're doing. Type 2, is there symptoms that you can come back from? If you know what I mean, all of a sudden do you get a warning shot, a warning sign, and then if you alter your life, you, you can come right back to, to normal, get rid of it? Great question. So I know with... Um, a I think it's one in four in New Zealand have pre-diabetes. So they're showing signs that, that could lead to type 2. So, so if you're, um, you know, your, your GP has said this or talking to your GP, it's a great opportunity to really look at you know, the, my daily exercise, the way I'm eating, the health, uh, healthy choices I'm making to see if you can bring that back. Because a lot of people are able to completely prevent it or delay it happening. We need to change the name of type 1, really, don't we? Has there ever been that discussion? So uh, I know many years ago it was um, called juvenile diabetes because it was commonly oh, right. in, in children, but yes. actually it's children and adults. But I know it, it does come up for discussion. Yes. Yeah. And you've, you've got a teddy bear in front of you. Is it, you've bought gifts as well? or What, um, what, <laughs> what, what, what so, what's with the teddy bear? So, Mark, Mark, what's a teddy yeah. bear? No, I've been eyeing it up. up. Yeah. So the bear in front of me, this is uh, Jerry the bear, who we are, we, Diabetes New Zealand have been working with um, beyond type one and we've, we've brought them in and we're giving them giving them out to newly diagnosed type one uh, type one children uh, aged between four and ten but what's so great about jerry the bear is with the use of a smartphone app you're able to test his blood sugars um carb count administer insulin so mm. for children not only is he this level of you know this comforting toy mm. but a fantastic educational tool to talk you know talk them and teach them about living with diabetes and, and realizing you know how to, how to manage. That proves it's that, that juvenile disease we're told early, isn't it? That's hey, right. good. Nice to see you. Such positive force yeah. as well. Thank Fantastic. you. Um, news is next plus the panel, PR specialist Jane Luscombe and journalism academic um, who will be completely, um, in, you know, critical of me holding a teddy bear right now, journalism academic Richard Pamatato. Now she doesn't love